No. Okay. 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 Alex, Gina, we are going to talk about fitness evaluations. Alex, you've done a ton of these already, right? Yeah. Um, and then Gina Marie, have you, were you at Adam's training or no? No. No, right, no so, it was just right. me and Scott. Just you and Scott. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you guys can down a pick one. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So <clears throat> the question is, when do we do fitness evaluations? Mm -hmm. right, so obviously we do a full fitness evaluation when the clients, when a member buys a training program, right? So in other words, if uh, Alex joined the club, he comes in to see me for the sales process. I take Alex through the sales process. I do part of a fitness evaluation in the sales process, right? We don't do, we don't do the whole fitness evaluation during the sales process. Uh, during the sales process, all you, all you need, all Alex will do is just the, the FMS from the three screen and body cut. That's it. Right. And then he takes him to If the individual buys a training program, then the very first session is a full fitness evaluation, which is what we'll discuss in a minute. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. And if they don't buy PT, right? So if Alex, I took Alex to the sales process and he said, nope, nope, can't do it, don't want to do it, uh, whatever the case is. Um, then I still schedule Alex right away. I say, hey, Alex, no, no big deal. Listen, here's what you and I need to do. Let's schedule a time to meet tomorrow so we can complete the fitness evaluation. Make sense? Yep. Um, so those are the, 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 I mean, so in the third scenario would be is if somebody buys some sort of a um, short-term or long-term, uh, uh, well, I guess short-term program, not long-term. That's I'm talking. When I was thinking long-term, I was thinking a six-week program. But somebody buys some sort of 15-day, 30-day, six-week uh, program, then of course you do a full eval before and then full eval after, right? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, here's what's most important: is that all of the clients have the entire eval done. Everyone that you took through the sales process, Alex, that did not buy, they should have the entire email done because when you come back to follow up with them or they come back to follow up with you in four weeks, you need that data because you're going to compare and contrast how much progress they made working out on their own. Cool? Okay. Um, so let's go through the process. I hope this is a, a massive review and I really, Alex, I, I commend you. I appreciate you hopping on the call even though you've seen this over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, so you're a good man. All right, let's do this. It's always good for refreshers. It really, it really. I mean, every time I talk about it, like it just it, mm. it, it re ingrains in my mind on how important certain steps are. Um, so first of all, you, you got to understand it. And really, it really uh, generally, this is from, from your perspective. I guess, Alex, from your perspective as well, from a sales perspective, what I want to say is this. We assess clients uh, or all of our members three different ways, right? We assess them uh, aesthetically, measurements, body fat, we assess them mechanically, functional movement, uh, and then we assess their performance doing an, uh, a uh, performance assessment, mm -hmm. which just gives us a really round uh, perspective on how to start exercising with someone the right way. Like we keep, uh, we, we take into consideration these people's, of course, medical history and their current fitness goals and the way that they move their body, keeping that in mind for the full evaluation really gives us a nice perspective on how to get started. Cool? Cool. So what are the steps? And like, so this is, this is the front of it. And if you, you guys have an evil, right? Yep. <laughs> so if you have a, an e-volt or an in-body, but some sort of a scanner, you technically don't need to do uh, measurements if you don't want to, right? Because it's, the data is pretty, it's pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. But we, we still take people's, uh, we still take people's measurements. Uh, no particular reason for another, um, we like to do it. Um, just, and, um, uh, yep. uh, just like for the measurements, um, it, like, can you give me like your perspective on doing it? Yeah, so we take three different measurements, chest, waist, hips, mm. right? Here's, like, I, 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 uh, I feel like um, the measuring tape is such yeah. a, um, and when I say old school, I mean it in a good way, uh, basic personal training uh, tool. I, uh, I, I love the, uh, the, um, the, I guess the, the not the gen, it's the wrong word, um, 
I like that tool because it's such a basic tool uh, to use. Um, I, I don't know. I don't have a better word of saying. I don't know what I'm mm. thinking about right now, but I, I just, I, I think it's original. Um, it's kind of like the stethoscope for a doctor, right? You know, he's got a stethoscope. I got a measuring tape and he's got other tools. I got FMS. I mean, those are, those are all uh, simple tools. Um, so, but I, I'm not saying that you have to do, it, but if you're not going to do it, then, then whatever, then just don't do it with anybody. Right. Uh, yeah. System with whatever you're doing. Uh, oh, yeah. So, Obviously, this makes sense. The top part here, what, what do we do, right? Name, dates, the, the whole nine yards, right? Yep. This part here, you guys, you don't fill this out initially. Right, Alex, if I take you through the initial eval, I'm not going to have any results to fill out. It's when you come back to me in four weeks and I've completed the entire eval, right? Then I can compare and contrast to see where we are. What was our weight back then versus what, it, what, is, it, uh, what is it now? What's the difference? Make sense? Yep. What was our body fat percentage back then? What is it now? What's the difference? Cool? Cool. Uh, at the very bottom, the e after assessment, make a certificate of achievement. What's that about? So we'll get to that. It's, it's, it's at, the, at the very, well, I guess, let me answer right now. So it's inside of the, and I can show you where it is. It's inside the Google Drive folder under the assessments. Um, every time you complete an assessment, with someone and you have before and after sort of assessments, if there's any sort of accomplishments or achievements, what all this, all this is here is, is, a, is a certificate that you need to print. And on there you write, Mike lost 0.2 inches and you know, 1% body fat in the last eight weeks. Hand write that in, take a, hold it just like this with you holding your client and we we'll take a photo. You know, you okay. pass that on Facebook. That makes sense? Yeah, that makes you a lot of sense. Give them that certificate of achievement. You got to acknowledge people's success. Maybe make a copy of it and ask them, hey, Alex, do you mind if I, if I frame this on our wall to show people how much progress our clients are making? Mm -hmm. Cool. And of course, replace them right to every, every eight weeks. But that's, that's what that is. That this is uh, okay. yeah, a very, very important part of it, the whole process. Um, when you guys are doing, and, and Alex, now you've done a bunch of these uh, screens, especially a bunch of screens, maybe with the same individual, you probably have gone through what, at least uh, two or three assessments so far, right? With some of the same? Yeah. Okay. You know, and I think you and I talked about this the, a while ago, but I think this is a good way, good time to really bring it up. Dude, it, it, every time you do an overhead squat assessment with me, if you've done it now three different times with me, and I'm not, as a client, learning anything, and you're not correcting anything, I'm mm -hmm. going to, and you're not tying it back to my goal and how this is gonna help me by improving my overhead squat, I'm going to lose interest in doing the overhead squat. Okay. All right, so what I'm saying to you is, every time you do the overhead squat, make some, make some notes here, right? And then next time I do the overhead squat, tell me if I am or I'm not improved. If I'm improving in my overhead squat, great. How does that relate to my goal of losing an additional 25 pounds? And you could literally say the same thing for all of these lift screens. If you, when you become more functional, more limber, right? More stable, I can push you harder. I can, when you become more athletic, Right, you, you, when you gain more endurance, you get pushed harder. What that means to you, Alex, is your results will come faster. Or so, mm -hmm. what you need to be eating. Right? And when I say results will come faster, if I can push you harder, not only will we burn a lot of calories while we work out, you're going to continue to burn calories post-workout. And that's how this particular screen specifically affects your fitness goals. And, you know, and never mind the fact that you just become overall uh, more functional and not, uh, you know, you're less likely to get injured picking up a laundry basket um, simply because you're more, you know, flexible. Mm -hmm. Cool? Cool. So when, when, you, when you talk about um, the FMS, I mean, Casey Conrad talks about using a specific, um, specific language. She says feature benefit feedback. That's what she talks about. And I think, I don't know, Alex, if you and I talked about this, when you talk about the FMS with your clients, tell them, man, Ms. Jones, I don't know if you remember that, but the, what's, what's interesting about the functional movement uh, screen is that this particular screen helps me as a trainer understand which of your muscles are weak versus tight. That's the feature. So if anything exercise science related, that's a feature. Now, the benefit to you is this. Once we know this stuff and we continue to correct this stuff, we can improve your movement, uh, the quality of movement patterns. We can push you harder, which all relates to you 
helping you lose 20 pounds faster. That's the benefit. Make sense? Yep. And then, hey, how does it feel to know that this particular tool will allow me to push you harder so you can lose your weight faster? But when, whenever you talk about the FMS, just, just talk in those, in, in those terms. Like, what's, what, what's, the, what's the feature? What's the benefit? And then you know, have, a, have, have a conversation with me. You don't always okay. need to do it, right? But sometimes you need to explain to someone, hey, here's why we're doing what we're doing. Cool? Cool. And the same thing for like the four week follow ups, um, giving them the feature benefit and feedback of exactly where the progress is at. Sure. When you're redoing the entire email, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. For sure. Um, anyway, so once you do the, the biggest thing I want to point out here in the FMS is this, if you keep doing it with the same individual over and over and over again, and man, and if they're not changing, but like you got to really understand like, what the heck, we just did the overhead squat assessment eight weeks ago and it's like the same, you know? are they coming in to work out like they're supposed to? Are they slacking on the dynamic warm up? Am I not coaching the dynamic warm up right with that individual? Or do mm -hmm. I need to give them one or two additional things to do pre and post workout? Because it has to change. It has to improve. Cool? Cool. Um, I think what you'll find is that if, you're, if the functional movement uh, screen isn't changing on your clients, uh, it's because a lot of times we are dropping the ball during the dynamic warm-up. We're not coaching it right, or clients aren't taking it seriously. They don't understand that they're that part of every workout, but it's designed to correct this stuff to help them improve uh, and help them lose weight faster. So you have to constantly like resell it almost all the, all the time so they understand the benefit of it. Cool? Cool. Um, uh, yeah. So if you have a client that starts off as a strength and, you know, they have maybe a three in the shoulder, um, how, how often have you seen them go into power after they've been working with you? Yeah, so remember, the idea isn't to necessarily be uh, they may never be a power level client, but overall they feel better. Like we have a guy, uh, his name is Gene Harshberger. The guy is like 75 years old or something like that. So he's like, you know, he's like, yeah, right? Like, you know, I'm, I'm never going to necessarily correct that entirely, but I will be able to minimize injury, right? I will be able to prevent him from throwing his back out or tweaking mm. his, uh, his, uh, his neck, right? Um, so the, the idea is to move well and move often, right? That's the slogan for FMS. So as long as they're still moving well, right? Like you may not be able to correct it all, in, all entirely, but sometimes, yeah, like it's really hard to be a power level client. Uh, mm -hmm. especially in the overhead squat. You might get some people that might do all right in the lunge, but uh, the shoulder, uh, I mean, with some, some uh, probably, mainly women will probably do well in the shoulder mobility one, but the overhead squat is going to be a doozy. That's, that's a hard one to be okay. a power level client. Right? Um, so yeah, I mean, that's a good question. If, you're, if, the, if a lot of your scoring is nothing but power level clients, right? Mm -hmm. I can tell you I, out of 120 five clients, 26 clients we have, I think Adam was telling me we might have five or six that are power level clients. The rest are strength level clients. We have, of course, a bunch of, uh, a bunch of stability level clients. Yeah, right now I have a bunch of stability and strength level clients, right. no power. I was just kind of curious if, you, if you've seen that, you know, yeah. when they've worked with you, oh, yeah. that they've moved, progressed up into the power. If they don't progress, then dynamic warm up uh, is garbage. Okay. <laughs> like they, yeah, they, they should feel improvement right okay. and then i should vision i should see the change and if i don't see the change once again it's not the dynamic warm up isn't working it's that i'm not coaching right or the clients aren't taking it seriously or they're skipping out on every foam rolling session at the end of every team training session right and when they're doing the dynamic warm-up at the beginning they're not really taking it so they just want to get to it right yeah right so anyways you got you got to coach that um cool so we we do the fms right and then we Go on this on the on the opposite side on the second page uh, of the assessment. You have your, you have your performance part of the assessment. Right? So, Jean Marie, uh, you've seen this, right? Yeah. Um, so, if we assess this individual as a stability level client, then this is the AMRAP they're going to go through. Alex, let me ask you this: When you're doing the AMRAP, um, especially with stability level clients, I'm sure you've had situations where you they didn't even complete it, right? Yeah. What do, What do you do then? What do I do then? I just, I'd rather have them focus on, you know, getting the technique down, letting them know, get, 
getting them comfortable working with me and letting them know that I'm not going to hurt them, that I'd rather focus on the form rather than get, letting them get as many reps as possible. You got it. Full range of motion, proper form. That's mm -hmm. what we should be coaching on, on both the, the, uh, of course, the overhead, I'm sorry, the, the FMS and on your performance test. That's right. And at any given point, at any given point, it's totally up to you to stop the, uh, the AMRAP, right? Okay. If you feel like the quality is just getting uh, sacrificed, if you feel like they're just doing partial repetitions, even though they might feel like they can go longer, no. And you, when you tell them why you stop, you stop the screens, why you stop the performance part of the assessment, right? The same time as some of your clients that are going to get in better shape, you need to push them. Okay. <laughs> this is a, a performance test, and you remind them of that, especially some of the people that are in better shape. At the same time, as I say all of this, I want to push my clients, use common sense, use, use, uh, use good judgment. Right? Um, some good questions around here to ask, Ms. Jones, what do you have for, uh, if you're doing it the first, at the beginning of the day, did you have breakfast today? You know, did you have lunch? When was the last time you ate? Right? Um, are you a diabetic? Of course, you should know that based on the medical history of RQ that you have mm -hmm. clients for. Uh, but yeah, this one's pretty straightforward. Um, the, once again, the, the uh, feature benefit feedback. Ms. Jones, we're going to do a performance part of our, uh, of our assessment today. What's interesting thing about the performance part of the assessment, what it assesses is strength, endurance, and overall your ability to, uh, to perform physical activity. The benefit to you is this, when I see your endurance improve and you're slinging heavier weight over time, this will help you become a better athlete. So therefore, once again, I can push you harder and therefore you'll be able to see your results much faster. Do you understand, Mrs. Jones, why we're doing the performance part of the assessment? The other part of it, something to keep in mind is sometimes, although your main objective is to lose weight, but sometimes it's just not in the cart. Sometimes we don't want to focus on losing weight. Sometimes we just want to come into the club and work out. And although mm -hmm. maybe changes, or there may not be changes maybe in your scale weight and your, measure, in your measurements, but there will be massive changes in your functional movement screen in your, in your assessment, which indicates to you that your physical activity that you're doing on a daily or weekly basis is working, right? And then when the time is right, we can then focus on, on nutrition so you can lose weight. Make sense? Okay. Yep. And that would really decrease any uh, uh, sort of conversations for someone who's like, oh, I don't want to do the assessment. Yeah, because they don't want to step on a scale. They don't want to get the body fat tested. I get that. But there's more to it than just, you know, uh, testing body fat. Um, cool. So, anyways, you, 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 you take them through the, uh, the assessment uh, or the, uh, the performance part of the assessment. You're counting repetitions, full range of motion, proper form for eight minutes. It's that simple. Okay. Now. Here's something interesting. I don't know if you, you well, that's, I guess based on our conversation, you haven't had this happen yet. If you get a stability level client that becomes a strength level client, mm -hmm. you do the stability so you can compare performance. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, can you explain that to me as yeah. to why? So if I'm a stability level client, say eight weeks ago and eight weeks later, I've improved in my overall conditioning, right? And well, I'm sorry, I've improved in my overall uh, um, flexibility and stability. And eight weeks ago, I could hardly complete my stability level AMRAP. You still do the stability level AMRAP. Does that make sense? You show yeah. progress then. The next evaluation, you're going to pick up with a strength EVA or a strength okay. So there's a little lag, and that's okay. Okay. Like because you can still make, because you can still show changes. Like if I do, if, um, if I, do a, uh, if I do a stability level assessment, say eight weeks ago, and I got, you know, say 145 repetitions, and eight weeks later, right, I got 190 repetitions, and I improved in my overall movement assessment, and overall, my, uh, my raw score is a two, and you feel confident progressing into a strength level client, next time we do an evaluation, which is eight weeks from today, I will do a strength portion of the performance part of the assessment. That makes sense? Just a portion or the full thing? The full thing. Yeah, the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. And there will still be, and you can still make parallels. You can say, Ms. Jones, eight weeks ago, you and I did a stability part of the, uh, uh, the performance assessment. This, this time you're, do, you're using a strength part of the, the performance test. You're using heavier weight, right? And you completed almost just as many repetitions as you did in the stability part of the, the assessment. Hey, good, good on you. You rock. Okay. So there's still change, right? But, and then we're back on, right, on, on schedule. Make sense? 
Makes sense. Cool, you come back over to the table and we talk about your training schedule. Ms. Jones, or you've been coming in on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, do those dates and times still work for you? And if she says yes, great, you're moving on. If she says no, actually I want to change, okay, then, then, we, then we change. Cool? Cool. Try to do your scheduling, if you can, like one time every eight weeks as opposed to every flip and workout or one week out at a time. Yeah, that's what, uh, what's, what I'm trying to implement with uh, most of my clients. I have two clients that work for the airlines, and so yep. their schedule is kind of wonky, okay. and so I'm trying to work okay. with them. That's totally fine. And I, I would rather deal with two or three clients that have a hard time scheduling, but that means they could still schedule but like one or two weeks out, right? They just can't schedule eight weeks out. Yeah. Yeah. And that's totally fine, uh, as opposed to working with you know, 30 different clients every single session. is just a waste of time. Um, so, cool. And then if I'm a personal training, well, whether I'm a PT client or not, you should know what my 12 month weight loss goal is if my goal is to lose weight because you set that with me during the sales process. Make sense? Yeah. When you're selling personal training, so I mean, it will, and we'll discuss of course this more uh, uh, next week, but you are setting a specific number for me to hit. If, my, if I weigh 200 pounds and my goal say is 160 pounds, which means if we're next, to accomplish for the next 10 to 14 months, that means my weight loss goal is 40 pounds. Make sense? Yeah. And if my body fat percentage say is 40% and my, uh, and my goal say is 30%, then I need to lose 10 percentage of fat. Make sense? Yep. And remember, and this is, this is set when you are talking to them about buying personal training every eight weeks you are tracking to see are you closer or further away from what you and i talked about alex you know eight 16 or 24 weeks ago cool yeah and then when it where it says additional goals it really what i what i should really say is additional maybe events like do they have a wedding that's coming up is there a race maybe they're training for? Is there something that's going up that we know that would help motivate them to accomplish something? And if they got nothing, no big deal. You would know this based on you uh, qualifying the individual during the point of sale. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, some of that um, is also in the, like, the, the fitness assessment questionnaire, mm -hmm. where it asks, do you have any big events coming up? You got it. Yes, no. Yep, you got it. But the point is you just take that information and mm -hmm. transfer it to here and you need to know as a trainer, if, if Gina Marie's goal is to, you know, lose 25 pounds and that's the goal we set to accomplish, you know, 16 weeks ago, how's she doing? Mm -hmm. if, if she's not on track, if we, if we keep doing what we're doing in the next, uh, say for another three or four or five valuations, will Gina Marie be on track or not? If she's not, we better do something about it. We need to step in right now. Right. And then you, uh, every eight weeks, uh, I, I would suggest setting two kinds of goals. If somebody somebody wants to focus on a fat loss goal and you give them a third goal, no big deal. So we should guarantee base minimum outcomes. Like we should guarantee that clients should be losing a minimum of three to six pounds of fat every eight weeks. All right, so I'm talking about fat weight, right? Not necessarily scale weight. Scale weight might drop more or less. But if I, especially you guys have a medical grade device that measures total fat, right? If, if Mrs. Jones is 200 pounds and she's 40% body fat, that means of her weight, 80 pounds of it consists of fat. What I'm saying is every eight weeks, that lady needs to be progressing by a minimum of three to six pounds of fat gone. Mm -hmm. Cool? Cool. So like a quarter to a half a pound of fat a week. Right? And if that's not happening, something is off. And I'm telling you, it's not the workout. Your workouts are fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. And so then you set a usage goal, right? Say, hey, Alex, over the next eight weeks, how many times a week are you planning on coming in? You know, all of your programs are, you know, unlimited team, at least unlimited team training programs. We should be requiring people to come in at least two to three times a week. But you tell me, like, what works best for you? Well, I can be here at least, uh, you know, twice a week over the next eight weeks. Okay. So that means it's roughly about 16 to 18 workouts. Got it. So you would put that on there, 16 to 18 workouts. And then we talk about nutrition. Listen, last, uh, in the last eight weeks, Alex, the, the, the habit you wanted to work on was sleep. How's it going? 
going pretty good. You know, I'm at, I'm getting about seven, seven and a half hours every night. I'm not getting that full eight, but it's a lot better than six hours. Correct. Perfect. Cool. That, that's wonderful. Now, here's a good question. So, Alex, now that you're getting more sleep, have you, how have you noticed other parts of your life changing because now you're getting more sleep and you're, 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 you're accomplishing, right, these fitness mm -hmm. goals? Like, it's like you're, you're creating a momentum of, of living a better, healthier lifestyle. What else have you noticed changing? I've, I've noticed that um, I don't get as tired as fast at work. Like I'm able to get through the day a lot more because I feel like I'm more rested when I wake up. And it just seems like everything is easier now that I'm not so tired. Sure. By you coming into the gym consistently and getting more hours of sleep, have you noticed how other parts of your life are also getting more in line, particularly with nutrition? Yeah, I feel like since, you know, I'm working out more and I really want to lose um, this fat, I've been starting to implement some more fruits and vegetables with it. I'm drinking more water because I feel um, just a little dehydrated after working. I don't want to replenish it. Cool. And so That's wonderful. And that's exactly what will happen. That, and that's mm -hmm. a pretty solid answer. That's exactly what will happen. Like wait, if people are if people are consistent with their, with their working out, right, and they're consistent with their nutritional goal, which is all you want them to be consistent, if they do anything above and beyond that, great, that's on them. But the only thing you want them to do a really good job with is get your butt into workout like you said you're going to and stay consistent with whatever habit you and I talk about. But what ends up okay. happening is once I check off those boxes, right, it, it, I, I get into momentum of doing good things. I want to continue to do those good things, and it starts to spill over in other aspects of my life. I start paying attention to what I'm eating for lunch. You know, I have, and I'm not eating, you know, the sugary cereals like I used to. I'm eating more, maybe more eggs and more vegetables for breakfast, right? Mm. Cool. And hey, listen, that's all, that's, that's good, good, good progress. That's wonderful. Out of these, the rest of these habits, Alex picks, which one do you want to work on? Whichever one, of course, he picks, then you're going to give him the articles um, to, uh, to help him. And, and, and if, listen, if you guys are going to start using, uh, uh, of course, uh, Coach, Coach Catalyst, that would really, um, I mean, the whole habit thing is going to be really, really even uh, simpler conversation. At that point, you would just ask Alex, hey, how's Coach Catalyst doing? Let's take a look at your account. Because at that point, you'll know mm -hmm. what percentage of my, of my lessons I'm actually completing. Make sense? Okay. It's actually, there's accountability to it, right? This would be the only, doing nutrition this way, like it's hard to get accountability to it because, you know, am I or am I not doing it? But it's very, it's a lot easier to do it if you have a software that keeps track of, am I doing the lessons that uh, I'm being sent to do on a regular basis, right? But this is at least something and this will work, even if you guys don't do Coach Catalyst. Cool? Okay. And for like Coach Catalyst and when we're like back in the gym and doing our sessions, they can still record those sessions within Coach Catalyst? Or? Record those sessions. What do you mean? Like, um say that they attended the session that they were meant to or is it um just for the what we're doing right now? <laughs> so within coach Callis, what's pretty cool is you can set up habits so and like in other words you can set up a, you can create it and and, and the, trevor the guy that owns the software he can walk you guys through it right within coach Callis, you can set up a uh, um a workout habit like you want me to work out say three times a week right and then mm -hmm. of course the all the lesson habits that you want me to do Right. And then every oh, yeah. day, all I do is I click yes, yes. Did I work out today, or did I did I did I click my did I do my habit? Right. And then it's very easy to see what percentage of uh, of, the, of the actual workouts they're actually getting in. Um, but you know, based on their based on their uh, usage, based on their skin and the key card, you you'll also know how many times a week they actually came into the club to work out. Cool. Cool. Um, that's really it. Like, so if this is your second time doing an evaluation, you might want to take a look to see, Hey, are we, are we improving? How's our weight? How's our body fit percentage total inches? Are we improving the performance score or is the, uh, uh FMS, uh, getting better? They, they may still be a stability level client, even though overall the, you, it, it looks like they're improving. They're definitely a little bit better, but not much. And if you remember, whenever you're on, whenever you're not sure, always, always, uh, regress always go a level lower make sense yeah that makes a lot of sense um cool you guys have any questions on the fitness assessment no pretty straightforward yep, yep. cool all right good deal
I'm going to stop recording.